Yo, what's up guys? Say Chronicles here. Going to talk about power. Where to get power, how to use it. Maybe a few things are very straightforward. It's like, oh, this gives you power, but how much power do you actually get from it? How much is it worth, etc. That's what we talk in this video. But first of all, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It tells YouTube we're out there. We're growing this channel. We're growing this community. And we're very close to 1K subscribers. So please help me out on that one. First of all, monsters. For monsters, you can, of course, see your power over here. My segment is close to 95k. But there are a few places where you can get power. And actually, if you press on this loop, you can see where your power comes from. So in this case, these are the numbers that we have. And we'll go over each of one of them and see what it increases, how much it values. So first of all, the monster, that is just the unit itself. I think that is mainly like what level is the unit. So... That one is pretty much maxed out for everyone at some point. That's pretty easy. Then we have Awakening 7% right now. And Awakening is, of course, these. And you can actually see the power increases by quite some because the base stats increases and therefore also the runes that you apply on them also multiply higher. So the higher the Awakening, the better it is. And as you can see, even going from uh, 13 to 15, which is very expensive on net fives, is a pretty big jump in power. That's like a straight up like 4K plus, like 4.2K. That's a good amount that you can still increase there. Um, you do have to keep in mind that the base stats of a net 3, for example, is more limited than the base stats of a net 4 and a net 5. So the higher the base stats, the higher the power potential can be of a unit. So for example, if I equip this whole set towards my Isalia, which is max skilled and max leveled as well, if we go for this set, you can see that it has a way lower score then it has on the segment. Segment is literally like 20, uh, 20k higher while not being fully skilled and while not being fully awakened. So therefore, you still want to focus on your net 3s early because they're that much cheaper to up. But at some point, you want to focus on those net 4s and net 5s. If we continue on, we see runes. And runes, of course, makes a lot of sense, but there's something extra to it as well. If you have a rune that has a legendary stat, and therefore it has four rolls and your rolls are high, then it will grant you more power. Does it necessarily mean that your unit is stronger? No. Um, if you might ask, like, what does it actually mean, like A1, AS2, S3, etc.? You have the grades from, um, let's see, a rune that actually has anything in there. You have the grades from D all the way to, do we have a D somewhere? I think I sold all my Ds probably. Yeah, I sold my D. Um, but yeah, you have the grades from uh, D1 all the way to S5, technically. Um, here, as you can see, everything is 1. That is because I didn't roll it. If I would up this rune, one of those uh, three will go into a S2, S2, or a C2. If I up it right now, that became an S2. So it's still a max roll, but it is now has 2 in there. If we go for another one, we can see it double rolled into speed, and now we're S3. If we triple roll, it would be S4. But it went into resistance, so resistance became S2. So that is how that works. So take your advantage with that. And you can e this is a very easy way of seeing, like, okay, is your rune good rolled or bad rolled? We need this in Sky Arena. I've been saying that with so many things. So besides just the rune stats, there's also two more things that you can add, which is the apply effect. You can get this through uh, professions and crafting, mainly the uh, alchemy, which I'll talk a little about that about later in the video and you can add this thing that has nothing on it right now i can apply this and i will get that stat on this rune that increases your power by quite a bunch as well i did already do quite some with enchantments of books but i did them all on like the lowest tier we have like a 4.4 crit rate in there right now which is not that much let's say i want to up that to a uh, 1.4 most of the time you don't really want to replace it but you can see that it will give like a, a small jump in power so just that 0.4 crit rate was like 40 power. But if you would do an actual like proper tier, let's say this, I think this is tier three and I also have a tier four. If I would equip this one in it, you would see a bigger jump in power. But these are books that I kind of want to keep for better runes later on, probably. So those two things help for runes as well. Then we go on to the next step, account effect. And account effect is all there is in account skills. So anything that you level on the right side towards uh, your monster. So for example, monster 6% HP. Uh, we also have the bottom left, which is like your monster damage. Now this one is not statistically power because the things that give something um, passively, like extra cooldown, extra damage, does not count for power. Uh, this, for example, also doesn't. 
But if you have these things that say, okay, crit damage, or we add extra accuracy, or we add, actually add extra stats, you will see a big jump in power for those. So if you want to see, like, if you're close to a certain power uh, threshold, but you can't do a certain stage yet, you could say, like, okay, maybe just sidestep this thing, get that 6% defense on all my units. You're running around with three units, you're going to get a lot of extra power that way. So we can go back, we go back to the monster, monster, and then we have power of ascension. And power of ascension is really nice. And that is also something I'm going to explain later, which currency should you use at which content. But for the ascension tower, you definitely want to get these power of ascension things. So you have power, uh, you have immemorial power and you have summon power. Both of them count towards your power. You have alchemy power and celestial power, which you can't see. Those do not count towards your power, but they're still very useful for giving, for example, aura of healing, uh, recovery aura. But in this case, if you want to up your power on your monsters, you would have to get these uh, night things from here. You get these from like other places. Um, but this is all explained in the TOA video, which is also on my channel already. So these two you want to get, or this one you want to get if you want to increase your monster power. Then we go back to the monster. Next one on the list is book. And the book is how many times did you pull a unit? So if you have a net four or a net five, the book counts towards that specific unit itself. So in this case, for a uh, segment, it adds extra attack and it adds extra accuracy. Every time that I pull the unit, I will go one level up. So the initial pull is level zero. Then every time you pull it is plus one level. So I pulled this unit already five, uh, six times, technically. And this goes down all the way to uh, 14. And then you have the unit 15 times pulled. Should you really focus on getting this maxed out? In most cases, not. Uh, it is a nice addition to get units stronger, but it, it's not really a must to get this all the way in there. It is a nice to have, but it's not a must have. Continuing on, closet. And closet is something I haven't talked about much yet. And I think it's something that's pretty overrated. If you go to closet, you can have certain um, outfits and you can craft these outfits with uh, specific things. For example, if I want to craft an outfit for Orbia, Orbia gets 50 damage by this one. This one is, I would say, relatively useful. And you get these materials over time somewhere anyways. Uh, the Orbia things, I think, are pretty useful. But if you see, for example, 24 defense for mage type, that is not that much stats. Or support type's 30 defense. That's, it doesn't add a whole lot. The outfits look cool, though, so you would, might want to get them for that reason. There's a bunch of outfits which outfit did i mainly walk around with in the na serve let me find it don't remember oh we got beach outfits here as well nice um i think i was mainly walking around with this one i'm not sure i don't remember but yeah some of these outfits are pretty decent ish but getting these yarn balls takes you quite a while it's pretty expensive also you have to get specific materials from specific dungeons so I wouldn't focus on that too much. It also doesn't increase the power by too much, I've noticed. And then the last one is the enhancing of skills. And the enhancing of skills for a net 5 count towards a lot. So every Devilmon I would throw in this, the power of segment would rise with like 1.3, 1.4k. Whereas if we check, for example, the power on this one, this one is fully max skilled already and has less percentage from power or from the enhances from the monster. Like if you compare the, the top one and the bottom one, because this one doesn't have any runes at the moment. And if you compare that here on the net five, you can see that there's a lot more power to be gained for a net five being skilled up. And that just increases the net five by so much stats. So that's everything for power for monsters. But we also have a summoner. I've been kind of slacking on the summoner power, but that is something that I will boost spike at a later moment when I can equip my equipment that's level 61. But let's see over here. We have the summoner, that is the level, which is 58 right now. We have the transcendence, which we didn't do yet, but you get a slight power jump. It is not that much. Every time you transcend, that is what you get from these materials. Um, you get them on a whole bunch of places, mainly path of growth. Like every individual path of growth drops one of these, and you can transcend it that way. But as you can see, if I would transcend all the way to level 70, I don't even have to be level 70 yet. I still get like a jump of like about 6k in power, which is pretty nice. So you do want to do that at some point. Continuing on equipment, that one is pretty straightforward, I would say. But something that has to be mentioned with equipment is that on equipment, you have certain slots. And these slots, you can actually improve something for your monsters. So therefore, it's also like if you, I would switch a weapon, which is possible to do from this menu by just holding that thing. 
you can see like the jumps in power like how much it goes up and down which is not just the summoner being stronger or uh, weaker because of a, a equipment is being better than another for example but it could also totally be because one does have these uh, things filled in and another one doesn't. And that gives you a pretty big jump in power as well. Because you see, I go minus 2k. Does my Orbia? Yeah, my Orbia only goes like slightly down, but I still go minus 2k uh, because of the gems that are in this thing. So I definitely want to put those gems in there. Um, so yeah, you can put those gems in there, but you also have the stones. So you have different stones. Once again, you get them from Alchemy. You have another slot that you can fill. So it's not just these two slots. You can also fill this slot with, for example, HP, crit rate, crit damage, all of that kind of good stuff. Also, I have to keep in mind that unused weapons still add 25% to your total um, power. So if you have a very good light weapon, but you actually don't use it because you're mostly in wind or fire or something, you still have that power jump or power increasing for that. And if I'm not mistaken, oh no, I think it used to be that light and dark weapons count toward more than that than the other weapons, but apparently not. Then you also have your sub weapon, and sub weapon is actually more useful to put your best gems on because your sub, sub weapon always counts as 100%, whereas your other weapons, if you don't use that particular weapon, counts as 25%. Your sub weapon will always count as. Uh, 100% because during every weapon switch you still have your sub weapon. Besides that you also have your accessories. Accessories do not have any uh, slots in there but they do have the possibilities of uh, applying the effect stones so you have specific effect stones for those and you can apply like extra stats on that as well. So that's a whole bunch of places for equipment that makes it may maybe less straightforward than just that. Then we have account effect, and account effect is the account skills. We showed that before, so I don't really have to go there again. Then we have power of ascension. Power of ascension showed as well before is TOA. Don't have to go there specifically. Closet, in this case, we have one outfit. I'm not entirely sure which outfit that is that gives slightly of a bonus. Wait, let me actually see which one that is. What are the stats? Um, if I say outfit effects, which one do I have owned? Okay, so the only one I have owned is Orbia with a like 500 extra HP. So you might say like, oh, Arby have 500 extra HP. That is quite some extra power, right? That's pretty nice. That is 0.2%. So that gives you an impression of like how good closets actually works towards your power game. Okay. And as final one, we have uh, enhancing skills and that's 20% for me right now. And that is within the skill three in here. So the more you equip here, like let's say you want a slight power increase, I could equip one of those skills and you get a slight power jump as well. If you want to focus on getting a lot of power from here, preferably you don't go for these things that are very expensive. You actually want to buy everything that's individually cheap and therefore you increase more power that way. So that's pretty much all there is to increasing your power. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you have, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. We're very close to 1K subscribers and I hope you have a great day.